Tyler. Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to this episode of, uh, What Happened to Your Face? What Happened to Your Face? This is a series in which I wear a look out for the night, and then I come home, and I tell you what happened to my face after living my life and gigging the drag gigs, all of the gigs. Uh, I'm filming in a little weird setup today. Actually, it's like just kind of my vanity setup. I'm using my vanity lights, not my my big, my big awesome lights that I was able to purchase because of my fabulous Patreon supporters. Thank you all so much for supporting me on Patreon. This is what you I was able to purchase with your funds. Uh, they are just like amazing studio. I have two of them. The other one's like up here. But normally, when you see me, I'm usually lit by by these giant soft boxes. Uh, so I apologize that the lighting's a little bit different. I just wanted to jump on here really quickly and talk about some things that happened to my face because I have to talk about some things. Okay, uh, tonight I had a fabulous night. It was a really, really fun crowd. Chloe was there, one of my subscribers. Hey girl, how you doing? She's an oceanographer. She's here for a conference. I love science. I love scientists. I think the world needs more of them and we need to support them more. So if you got a scientist in your family, tell them you love them. Also support science funding and research and you know, whenever there's legislation about uh, withdrawing science funding, make sure to call your representatives and make sure that we don't do that because we need it to make sure that we're progressing as a society. That's just all. It's what happened to your face, Kimberly. It's not a, it's not a listen up series, but well, okay, anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. Backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. Anyway, so hey, Chloe, how you doing? Yay. So I had a great night. It was super fun. I, every time when I punch out <laughs> at my, at my bar, I, Look at and look at myself in the mirror. Like check in, do a quick little. Oh my god, how did it go? What happened to your face? Like I do like a little. What happened to your face? Myself, like with myself every week, just to see. You know, I'm a makeup beauty guru YouTube person, so I'm always interested in the makeup that I'm wearing. Did it last? Did it hold up? What happened? And I noticed today as I looked in the mirror, I was like, oh my shine is pretty good. Now I walked out the door at, I, I, well I did actually filmed an Instagram live. If you are not following me on Instagram, please do. Kimberly Clark Official is my Instagram name and I periodically do little Instagram hangs and I did one today at around six o'clock. So I was in full face by six, 6.30 today. It's 1 a.m. right now. So it's been, you know, stand, my typical standard like seven hours of wear is what I'm, what I'm working with right now. And I looked in the mirror uh, as I was leaving and I was like, I think my shine is, like crazy good, like crazy low. And I was like confused because I left out a step of my makeup today that I always do. And I kind of just did it by accident, but then I kind of just went with it. Anyway, today I did not apply my Beckham Evermet Poreless Priming Perfector. And I, I, it's what happened was I actually just grabbed this Lorac Perfection instead. I mean, they kind of look similar and I was just quickly getting ready and I, I squeezed some out and I was like, oh, this isn't right. But then I was like, well, I might as well go ahead. Uh, for reference, the other primer that I'm wearing is this uh, primer from Shea Moisture. I've actually really been liking this. Um, I think it's pretty, it's a really good primer. It's like a moisturizing primer. It, it's like it's like a cream. It's not like a kind of silicone thing. Like like these, ki these guys are kind of like silicone-y clearish bases, but it also like smooths out things. I've been really liking this. I've been using it for a bit, haven't really been talking about it, but I've, I've been into it. I think it's been kind of cool. But so yeah, so I'm not wearing this today and my makeup is looking better. Now it is winter, like it's, I mean, I live in New Orleans, so it's not, doesn't get that cold. It's like a low of like 40 degrees today. I don't know, maybe, it, maybe it's a little drier than normal. And so maybe that's why my makeup was better. But I'm also like, is it because I left this out? I don't know. I'm going to try, I'm going to maybe leave this out in of the, you know, my makeup next time I do it. This has been like my holy grail primer. If you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know, this is amazing. It's like, I've, I've, I've rate, you know, that I've raved about this. Like it's, I've, I've I've always thought it's like the only thing that's keeping my face like remotely oil free like as I wear it and I don't know I'm just like I I'm wondering if this is like training my skin like clogging my pores and then making them produce more oil I don't know I remember like in a couple videos a couple months ago Jackie Ina talked about this being too heavy for her which is something she never thought she would say because she has oily skin and she, this is like a holy grail primer of hers. And she was like, stopped using it. And so now I'm like, 
oh my god, like maybe, or did we, had we drunk some Kool-Aid with the Becca and like have been into it for, have we been loving this under false pretenses? Like, I don't know. I'm really confused right now. It's really weird. Anyway, so... Okay, so for, for reference, just to say everything else that's on my face, because I know, of course, the primer isn't the only thing that affects how well your makeup wears, but I just thought that was, like, a key thing. That's, like, the key one of the key differences. It's really the only thing different in the last couple times that I've done my makeup that I did today, and it is better than it's looked the last couple times. Just saying. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, oh, that you don't have your lights on, you don't have your super bright lights, so maybe that's why you don't look as shiny, but I promise you, in person, I look less shiny than I normally look after these nights of, of doing four hours of crazy karaoke, you know, going, going balls to the wall. I'm sorry, I'm drinking some uh, lemonade from Burger King. Side note, I hate these Burger King fries. These are the worst fast food fries. I'm still gonna eat them, I don't like them. I much prefer a Wendy's, I'm gonna take a Rally's with that spicy stuff on them. If you're ever looking to get me some fast food fries, do not get me Burger King. Don't let, they're too thick and weird. I never knew I would have an opinion about what fries I preferred from fast food restaurants. I guess I never knew I would be driving home from karaoke drag gigs every week and having fast food being my only food option at one in the morning in a mid-sized city. Anyway, uh, life takes us to strange and fascinating places, doesn't it? So what the other stuff that's on my face, just to like go through the layers of it, Krylon TV Paint Stick, my regular foundation that I always love in the shades Taunchy and TV White, which is my highlight shade. And uh, I've been setting my face uh, recently, I've been baking the last couple times I've done my makeup with the original RCMA No Color Powder. Now this was sent to me by, again, Dee, my lovely subscriber, my benefactor from Sweden. She sends me, <laughs> she sends me makeup and I love her and thank you. Thank you, Dee. Tak, tak, Uh Anyway, uh, but I've been using this a lot instead of my uh, Cody Airspun Powder. And at first, when I first started using this, I was like, oh, this isn't for me. Like, it's a little too smooth. It's not as, like, thick and, like, cakeifying as the Coty. And I love that. Like, I love plop, 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 putting it on, letting it bake, and having it, like, really become, like, a solid layer of, like, cake. I like that. And this, when I first tried it, I was like, oh, this isn't really it. Uh, it it's, like, a little too soft. When you remove it, like, when I remove it, because uh, what I do is I pack on my bake with a powder puff, and then I brush it off with, like, a big puff puffy, fluffy brush like this. This is just a Sephora large powder brush. And I, you know, just usually brush, 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 brush. With this, I find that you have to, like, kind of swirl a little bit. I don't. Let me know if anyone else has had that experience with this. Like, it doesn't come off as easy. And at first I was like, oh, this isn't good. This is like gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna brush my makeup off. Like this isn't gonna be good. But the more I've been using it, the more I'm liking it because it kind of actually makes a little smoother finish. Now I'm not talking like brush, brush, brush. Like I don't think you should ever really go in and like brush your face like you're painting a house. Like you really should like pack things or quickly swipe things away for powder generally. But there's like a little bit more action that's required to get this off my face. And honestly, I think it actually is a, a slightly nicer finish. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever gonna fully give up on my Coty. It's a Holy Grail powder of mine, but uh, I don't know. She's uh, she's coming for you, air spun. And then I set my face, you know, then I did the rest of my makeup and whatever, and then I set my face with this, the Urban Decay D Slick Makeup Setting Spray. Now this is what I hauled in my little Sephora haul where I talked about some products I got from Hot Look as I got this on Urban Decay from Hot Look. Now this is the same formula as the newer packaged setting spray. I guess this is just older. It's from the older package. Um, and a lot of you were really curious to see what I thought of this. Now, I will do like a, a overview video where I have like a kind of rematch of setting sprays because a lot of you said that, that you would really want to see me do that with the NYX matte finish and this and maybe some other ones like my blue marble, like my old holy grail setting spray. And I did, I've used this a couple times. I haven't really noticed it be super like uh, game changing until like today. Like today, it, it, I feel like my makeup looks really good for the length of wear. And again, I don't know, this is just another factor that was in it. So maybe this was helpful, maybe it wasn't. I don't know, I need more time with her to decide how I feel about her. Sorry, Disla, I can't fully support you yet. But I mean, the mist of this is just beautiful. Like it really is. I, could you even see that? It was so fine. Okay, let's talk about this eyeshadow. Not the lid. The lid is a uh, gold goddess. 
uh, the Stila Magnificent Metals, which is, it has a mola mola, which means I like it. Anyway, but that's just over top of a gold eye pencil. This is Glitzy Gold from NYX. I find that these work best with a cream base that is the same color as the glitter. And I mean, there's a reason this is my favorite shade of this collection. Not all of the shades are created equal. If you watched my last video where I talked about it, you will hear me talk more about that. Gold Goddess is an absolute win, no question. Anyway, but I want to talk about the crease shadows I use. When I put on eyeshadow, if you watch any of my tutorials or Get Ready With Me's or anything, you know that I put foundation on my eyes. Like, I use foundation and I set it with powder on my eyes. So I, when I do my eyeshadow, I don't use like a liquid eyeshadow primer in addition to that. But for the lid, I always use a cream base. And then my crease is really just like a, you know, it's just my putting my matte eyeshadows on top of that cream base set with powder. And normally it's totally fine. And you know, I've I've thought about like extending the cream base higher, but I, I really like the cream base just being a thing to make the lid pop out more. I just find it's a little easier for me to kind of think about the the timing of the eyeshadows and the placement and stuff if I do it that way. That's just the way I do it. You know, I've never had a problem before with eyeshadows in my crease, you know, not really lasting and holding up, uh, despite the fact that there's not really a cream base underneath them unless you count the foundation and the powder, so I, I don't really know. Anyway, today, I don't know if you can see, I mean, the crease, if you can see the crease, like, I think my crease is beautiful. Like, it's blended beautifully. It looks fabulous. Um, but hello. Do you see this? Um, and this? That's not, like, creasing. That's, like, where? I mean, I guess it is technically creasing. It's just, like, where? Like, that eyeshadow's gone. Where'd you go? What happened? Where'd you go? Now, I, like, you might be like, oh, did you use a different eyeshadow? What'd you use? You didn't use your Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette? That never happens when you use your Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette. It's true. It never does. It never does happen. What crappy eyeshadows did you use today to do your crease? This is the Vizart Neutral Matte Eyeshadow Palette. It's an $80 eyeshadow palette. I used the black. And this warmish brown shade. I think I put this white in the brow bone a little bit. I loved these as I was applying them, but even as I was applying the black, I was like, is this creasing already? Like, it was kind of creasing already. And I had to, like, rebuild up color from places where it fell. I mean, look at this. Look at the even corner here. That's not creasing. That's on my... There's nothing that creases there. That's just my brow. It's like my actual eyebrow. And the color's gone. What? If you watched my Sephora haul or my last Instagram live, you've heard me talk about my experience with these uh, palettes where I got them and I got one in the mail, the pans were all broken, one of them was totally destroyed, they fell out, uh, they were flopping around, I ended up gluing them back together and I've, I've salvaged one, Sephora sent me another one, the pans are also broken, I mean here, this is the replacement palette Sephora sent me for the, the palette that I got that was broken, uh, I mean... My theory is this, that these palettes, the Vizart palettes that Sephora ships out, because at first I was like, oh, this was packaged really badly. It was packaged really badly. That's why it was bopping around with large containers. That's why it broke, in my opinion. But the other one was packaged really well. Single item in a box, plenty of uh, paper, you know, in it, very secure. Same way that my editorial mats was packaged, which arrived without incident. Some, I, and I commented that I update, I gave a little update comment on uh, that video, on my, my Sephora haul video to give you guys, you know, what to tell you what happened. And someone commented, oh, Sephora probably ships their Vizart palettes from like an old stock of them. Like they've been sitting in like an old warehouse, maybe not climate controlled, maybe like hasn't been maintained the way that it should be. And they're just old. So because what happened with this one that was shipped, the glue just did not hold up, you know? I mean, th maybe there was some jostling around in the shipping, but really this is a glue problem. Like these pans popped out, you know? Like, so I'm like, is that why this eyeshadow isn't working for me because it's actually just freaking old like is sephora selling old Vizart palettes like what uh, you know everyone on the internet and their mother raves about Vizart. i mean stephanie nicole is one of my favorite youtubers and she loves this brand she like swears by this brand so like there are so many people on the internet that i trust that have said this is an amazing product and 
I don't know. I mean, the blendability of these, the pigmentation is amazing. I would say that they're as pigmented as a Kat Von D shadow, honestly, but they blend way better. And they blend better in lots of different ways. Like, you can blend this with a dry brush, you can blend it with a different shadow, it won't totally erase the shadow underneath it. Like, they're really good. They're really, really good shadows. But, in all honesty, like, if this matte black eyeshadow couldn't hold up, the way that my Kat Von D black eyeshadow holds up from the Shade and Light palette or any Kat Von D palette. Oof, I don't know. I have I have doubts. I have doubts, Sister Mary Aloysius. I have doubts. That was a drama quote from a, a Pulitzer Prize winning play. Let me know if you have had experiences with this palette specifically or any of these art palette that you got from Sephora or that you got from a different place like Muse or somewhere else or Beautylish or something. Let me know if you've had similar experiences or different experiences. I just want to try to collect as much data as possible about different people's experiences. I'm not completely sure where everyone has gotten theirs from every time I hear someone talk about it. Now I'm going to pay more attention to that. Be like, oh, did she get it from Muse Beauty Pro? Oh, did she get it from Sephora? So I, I have to think more about that and like listen more to that part of the reviews, but I gotta just put it out there and say, like, y'all, like, from top to bottom, from shipping to packaging to everything to wear, my experience with this Holy Grail palette for so many people has been meh. I, I'm sorry, pr like, I... I don't know. If this is a faulty batch, or if it's Sephora has an old, like, old batch, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna glue in the pans in this one, and I'm gonna try it, and see if it's any better. If maybe it's a different batch or something. Everything looks exactly the same. Um, oh, wait a second. Wait a- Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a- whoa, wait a second. They're not the same. Look at the back of this. This is the one that I received initially, that had exploded. It's the Vizart Neutral Matte 17J. This is the one that they replaced it with, the Vizart Neutral Matte 17M. What? Wait, but it says VPE01, but then it says 17J and 17. Are those batch numbers or something? Is this M? Is it a newer batch because it's M? You guys, I'm, uh-oh. I don't know what to do. Like, I, whoa. I also think I glued these back in the wrong order. Is that possible? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, who? Okay, wow. Let me know. If you have a good Vizart palette, let me know what it says on the back. Does it say 17M or 17J? Maybe the 17J is a bad batch, like the bad screens in a MacBook or something. Like, what are those numbers? What do those numbers and letters even mean? I don't know. I'm even, like, scared to talk about it because everyone loves these so much. Like, anyway, I don't know. So that's, that's my eyeshadow crisis of faith with the Vizart. Um, Let's end this on a positive note and talk about these lips. I've talked about this lip before. Uh, it is my Holy Grail Matte Red Lipstick. Liquid lipstick, or maybe Holy Grail Matte... You know what? I think I'm just gonna say it right now. It's my Holy Grail Matte Red Lipstick. I know. I know, if you watch my All About Matte Lip video, you saw me talk about Cruella from NARS, the Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. I loved it, but I gotta say, for what I'm doing now and the way that I wear lipstick now, long wearing is like one of the most important uh, qualities. And comfort, of course, too. And while this is not as comfortable as a NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil, those are truly, like, you they're unbelievably comfortable and really long wearing. But this... Like, in terms of ease and speed, it's a liquid lipstick. I didn't use a lip liner, didn't use anything. I know I was a little sloppy with the lines, but come on. Like, this is pretty rad for applying seven hours ago. Let me just say what it is. It's the Colored Rain Liquid Lipstick in the shade Cherry Blossom. I talked about wearing this in my Taylor Mac 24 Decade History of Popular Music, What Happened to Your Face, where I talk about wearing makeup for like 15 hours and, you know, how it wore and whatever while performing. But I don't, I never got to show you, like, ex like, in person, like, this lipstick after seven hours of wear and no touch-ups. Hi. No liner, nothing underneath, just this just this liquid lip like holy crap i mean you know what maybe i did talk about this did i talk about this in what happened to your face yes i did i mentioned this in my what happened to your face after the march in washington which i wore this for like seven hours i gotta say it again I, it's can't beat it every time i want to wear a matte red lip i pick that up that's it it's mine oh, so fabulous again colored rain liquid lipstick in the shade 
Cherry Blossom, fabulous black owned makeup brand, great to support and fabulous product. Love all of their liquid lipsticks actually. Amazing liquid lipstick formula. Rivals the Kat Von D liquid lipstick for my favorite liquid lipstick formula of all time. Might be tied. I think I can safely say it's tied in terms of formula. Anyway, so there you go. That's what happened to my face. Wow, we've learned some things. Oh my God. Sorry, I knocked the fuzzy thing off my microphone. That's what that loud noise was. Sorry. 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 That's what happened to my face. It's, uh, uh, you know, I generally really great, great things happen to it and then some really weird things. So let me know if, if anything I said to you was a surprise or if you were like, no, finally someone talking about the Vizart shadows in a sensible way or that you've had that experience with or whatever. I don't know. Just, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just calling them like I see them. That's all I'm doing. Kimberly Clark. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It lets me know that I should continue to make this type of video. If you want to support me in a super practical way, consider becoming a patron of mine on Patreon. Check out my Patreon page. It's linked down in the description box. I have a whole essay that really talks about why I'm collecting funds in a crowdsourcing way and, uh, you know, why, uh, what, what I'm going to use the funds for and stuff like that. So uh, just just go, if you've, if you've been curious about it and want me to talk more about it, go check that out. A little heads up, I'm going to be changing around some of of the my patreon stuff uh, in the new year so please stay tuned for that I will have a whole video and everything of course talking about that anyway so but if you are already a patron of mine please know that you're the reason this shit's still going down let's be real you're the reason that I'm I'm making these videos with any frequency because you allow it to be a, a sustainable thing for me in a financial way so thank you thank you so much Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye. <laughs> okay, we gotta eat this Burger King now before I think it's not too cold. Uh, oh, those fries are cold. Um, the only thing worse than a Burger King fry is a cold Burger King fry. I'm sorry. I'm not being very ladylike.